with the valves taken care of, it does a whole lot better, but it still seems like it's not quite right and the unloader is not reloading, I guess you could say. So I'm gonna pop this cover off and we're gonna take a peek at the unloader assembly and see if we can figure out what's going on. be the problem right there. Uh -huh. Yep. The unloaders are broken off. So I believe we left off in the last video with the unloader being broken into multiple pieces actually. We have chunks of unloader. These are the weights. This was the piece that attached to the crankshaft. Now what you didn't see off camera was I made an attempt at removing this and sheared it right off. This has left hand threads going into here and apparently the bolt was rather weak because I went and tried to turn it what a normal threaded bolt would be and it started to turn. So I thought, oh, I'm loosening it. In fact, I was shearing the bolt off. So, what I did was took a drill and drilled a very, very tiny hole in it. My plan was to drill it out and use a broken bolt extractor kit type thing, but I was starting with a small bit and then was gonna step up to a bigger one until I could get an extractor in there. Well, what happened as I was drilling, because I was drilling in the direction that a reverse thread bolt would be loosening, it spun right out. So, crisis averted, unloaders out, new unloaders here. This place I got this from is called Master Tool Repair. They have pretty much every part that I could find, or every part that you would ever need for one of these Kellogg compressors. Complete rebuild kits, you name it, they seem to have it all. So here is our new unloader assembly. Let's take a look at this thing, see how it works. This unloader, threaded end, threads into the crankshaft. And as this spins, these weights will fly outward, which pulls the little pin in. So this little pin is pushing out on the Schrader valve that's down inside of this elbow that goes on the outside cover. So, what that, whoops. So, what that does is through the hose that comes down from the outlet of the high pressure valve, when that Schrader valve is open, it bleeds the pressure from the high pressure outlet valve into the crankcase, which then comes out through the vent into the low pressure inlet valve, which would just go out the, um, out the air filter. So this will fix all our problems. So we're gonna install this. Remember, with this, it's uh, lefty, tighty, righty, loosey. Since this compressor rotates this way, as the compressor runs, it's trying to tighten this. And that should be kind of an indication because there's no wrench marks or anywhere, no, no spot to get a wrench onto this. But as disappointing as it was to find these broken parts, there was good news from that too. That is that the bearings and everything in the bottom end of this compressor looks great. So, we might 
still get out of this relatively cheaply. So let's go ahead and put our cover back on. I took a few minutes and cleaned an awful amount of sludge out of this thing. Man, it was disgusting. So let's bolt this back up and see if we can fire this dude up and get her working again. You're going to use a blowgun connected to my old air compressor to adjust this right where it needs to be. So we're going to start this in and then not unloading there and there it is.